So let's talk about pronouns. All words have some meaning, but some words are so dependent on context that by themselves, they almost don't mean anything at all. When I tell people I host the Link Space, they know that Moti Lieberman's a YouTube host. But pronouns like I can refer to just about anybody. After all, if you look up I in the dictionary, you're probably not going to find a picture of, well, me. So how do we decide what pronouns can refer to if their meaning just changes from time to time? The answer is more complicated than you might think. I'm Moti Lieberman, and this is the Link Space. Welcome to the Ling Space. We've talked a bit before about the abstract structures underneath our sentences. But if you think that syntax is just about drawing up some trees, think again. The relationships that syntacticians have spent decades uncovering aren't just empty, airy musings. They really have a big impact on the way that we use and interpret certain words. And number one on that list is pronouns. In fact, by the 1980s, linguists had so much to say about them that they devoted a whole framework to them, known as binding theory. We'll explore its three basic principles in this episode, but first, let's figure out what pronouns even are. Well, like we just said, some words don't really have the kinds of meanings that you can just memorize and know, like Amsterdam or oxygen. Instead, they need to latch on to something else around them in order to get their meaning. And around them can really mean, like, nearby in the world. So imagine you're at a party, and your friend gestures to Isaac across the room and says, he used to date a girl named Monica. Even if you've never met Isaac, the circumstances tell you who he refers to. That's because the circumstances point out Isaac is the meaning of he. If that sentence were used in another setting, at some other party with totally different people, that he could mean somebody else entirely as long as whoever that happens to be also dated a girl named Monica. Depending on context for meaning is the defining property for pronouns. But as it turns out, pronouns don't always have to travel across the room to get their meaning. Sometimes they can get it right in their own sentence. Take, for instance, Hazel went to the mall so she could hang out with Caitlin. You might not know who Hazel is, but you know who that pronoun she refers to. It's that Hazel person who's doing the mall going. Now here's where things get interesting. Our syntactic knowledge, the rules that we have stuck inside our heads telling us how to interpret sentences, it doesn't only tell us what pronouns can refer to, it also tells us what they can't. So like, there's no way that we can interpret that sentence so that she means Caitlin. So what's going on there? If you've watched any of our other syntax videos, you can probably guess that the answer has to do with the structure of the sentence. There are principles at work dictating which words a pronoun can refer to, and where you've got syntax rules, you're gonna have trees. But just to nail this down, let's consider if we can make this a linear order thing. So maybe she can only refer to a noun that comes before it. That sort of rule may work for the sentences we've looked at so far, but it wouldn't work for something like, she went to the support group because she's still a cancer patient. In this sentence, both pronouns can for sure point to cancer patient even though they're before it. To get an idea of what these principles must look like and how they work, let's take a gander at some pronouns that need to find meaning within the sentence, reflexives. Up until now, we've been focusing on personal pronouns, so things like he, she, or me. These can look either within a sentence or outside of it to find something that they can refer to. Reflexive pronouns like himself, herself, or myself are much needier. They need to have a noun nearby to comfort them and tell them who they are. So imagine the sentence, Hazel saw herself as a grenade. The pronoun herself has to refer back to Hazel. It can't refer to anyone else. Not Hazel's mom, not Anna, no one but Hazel. The pronoun's meaning is locked down. And to understand how that happened, we need to take a look at some of the underlying structure. The first thing to notice is that we put a little I beside both of the noun phrases. This represents the fact that herself refers back to Hazel. So part of our rules should be that reflexive pronouns point at something inside their own clause. But that's not quite enough. What about herself saw Hazel? With just our current rule, you might think that the reflexive should still be able to refer to Hazel. But this sentence sounds awful. Something's gone terribly wrong. We know that the order of the words alone can't do the job. So we'll need to introduce a new ingredient, a special connection between different parts of a syntactic tree. We call this relationship constituent command, or C command for short. C command is a little bit like your line of sight in a theater with stadium seating. You can see everyone beside you, and you can see everyone down in front of you, but you can't see anyone above you in the back. And if you're all the way at the bottom, you can't see anything else except your own row. 
If you can see something else, then you see command it. So in our first structure, the first noun C commands the reflexive. We can be sure that this is true because in general, the first noun phrase C commands everything right beside it and then everything below that, including the reflexive pronoun. And now that we know about C command, we're ready to set down our first rule. The first principle of binding theory, known as principle A, says that a reflexive pronoun must refer to something that C commands it in the same clause. Principle A is so fundamental that if any part of it is broken, the whole sentence collapses. So going back to herself saw Hazel, even though you might think that the reflexive pronoun should be able to refer to that second noun phrase, Hazel can't quite reach up high enough to see command it. Hazel is sitting right in front of the screen. She's all the way at the bottom and can't see anyone outside of her own row. So that's why the meaning breaks down. Even if a reflexive has something to refer to that's high enough up in the structure to see command it, things can still go wrong if it's in a different clause. Take a look at the structure for the sentence, Gus thinks that himself got his license out of sympathy. The reflexive pronoun himself is C commanded by Gus, but our rule still gets broken anyway because himself is hanging out in the lower subordinate clause. Gus is way up in the main clause, they just aren't within reach of each other. You can think of every clause as its own theater, and you can't see from one theater into the next no matter how high up your seat is. Now, since we've wrapped our heads around reflexive pronouns, maybe we can go back and work out a second principle, one that works for plain old personal pronouns. We already know that personal pronouns can grab hold of something in the environment to refer to because of sentences like, I read the book in two days, where the pronoun I refers to the speaker. But they can also pick out something inside their own sentence. So we can say, she's still a cancer patient, and the pronoun she can mean cancer patient. But this doesn't always work. Consider the sentence, Gus let him break the trophies. Even if I close my eyes and I try really, really hard, I can't get him to mean Gus. It's almost as if whenever some connection works for a reflexive pronoun, it can't work for a personal pronoun. If you had himself instead of him back there, Gus let himself break the trophies would be just fine. You have a nice clear situation of C command within the same clause and Principal A is happy. So what do we do with personal pronouns? Well, the second principle of binding theory, or principle B, really is the mirror image of principle A. It says that a personal pronoun can't refer to something that C commands it inside its own clause. So they really are opposites. That's why if you have Gus thinks that he got his license out of sympathy instead, that he has no problems being Gus. Now Gus and he aren't in the same clause. Just remember, wherever a personal pronoun can refer to some noun, a reflexive can't, and vice versa. Okay, so we've got our theory all worked out, right? One rule for personal pronouns and one for reflexive pronouns. But, well, pronouns aren't the only kinds of words we need to account for. Think back to one of our earliest examples. Hazel went to the mall so she could hang out with Caitlin. Somehow, the pronoun she isn't allowed to refer to Caitlin, even though neither of our rules has been broken. So what's going on? To make a long story short, we need a third rule of principle C, one that covers nouns. So that's proper names like Anna or Patrick, or definite noun phrases that describe specific things like that weird author or my dad. These kinds of expressions have the least requirements for how to interpret them, since they specifically point to something out in the world, unlike either flavor or pronoun. So our principal C is going to need to give them a lot of room to breathe. Unlike reflexive and personal pronouns, these referential expressions can't be C-commanded by anything that they refer to or anything that refers back to them, even across clause boundaries. Nouns are really rugged, lone wolf kind of things. That's why even the pronoun she at the very beginning of the sentence still can't refer to Caitlin. As far away as it is, it still C-commands Caitlin, so that interpretation is blocked. So in short, a reflexive pronoun needs to be C-commanded by what it refers to, a personal pronoun can't be, and a regular noun phrase can't be C-commanded by anything that it refers to ever, at all, even across clauses. And with that last rule out of the way, we're finally left with a much more solid idea of the role syntax plays in interpreting even innocent-seeming little pronouns. With three principles, we can clear up all the complications in telling how to match up our pronouns with their meanings. If you keep these in mind, your understanding will be faultless. So we've reached the end of the link space for this week. If you assigned the right reference to my pronouns, you learned that words that depend on their context for meaning follow strict rules telling them where they can go and what they can do. That reflexive pronouns are the most restrictive and must refer to and be C-commanded by something in their own clause. That personal pronouns can't be C-commanded by something in their own clause if they're going to refer to it. 
and that referential noun phrases can never be C commanded by anything they share their meaning with ever. The link space is produced by me, Moti Lieberman, and directed by Denise Prévost. This week's episode was written by Stéphane Herdemis. Our editor is Georges Coulomb, our music is by Shane Turner, and our graphics team is Atelier Muse. We're down in the comments below, or you can bring the discussion back over to our website where we'll have some extra material on this topic. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to keep expanding your own personal link space, please subscribe. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Prater kun!